Welcome to Pixel Composer 1.18.11 So this version doesn't have any new node We only have improvement on the already existed feature And a bunch of bug fix So let's get through it One of the bigger feature we have is The improvement on the curve data altogether Now you'll be able to adjust the Y range of the curve So by default or in the older previous version The Y range is away from 0 to 1 But now in this version You can adjust it to any number you want you can make it go from negative 1 to 1 You can make it from negative 10 to 10 Or whatever I cannot type 103 Sure However, when you're hovering on the curve You're gonna see that the Y will still be percentage You can also change that By right clicking and then click on show values And it's gonna show the absolute Y values Then we have a general improvement On the GIF reader So it should be faster and you should be able to read a more type of GIF So there are some GIF files that when you load into Pixel Composer It's actually broken It should be fixed now And it should be faster too Next will be an improvement on the VFX group So I have multiple dimension properties from the renderer Into the parent group itself So you have to double click on the inline group areas To be able to select the parent object And here you will be able to adjust the dimension So now you don't have to set the dimension in the renderer It's gonna use the group dimension automatically And the spawner node you now be able to use the relative unit as well And this will be relative to the to the group parents There are now also two new properties for the particle and the VFX spawner The base speed over time And the rotational speed over time So the over time here is the over lifetime of the particle So you can change the base speed And it says base speed, not the speed itself because There's also other physics properties that could adjust the speed right? If you have gravity, if you have friction, if you have acceleration those could be interfered with this curve as well So this is just the base speed that it used before other calculation There's also an improvement on the VFX triangulate node So now you can have more control over the line thickness Or the thickness over length Or the color over length Next is an improvement on the feedback system When you're scrapping the timeline The feedback system will be deactivated So now it will not like repeatedly expand the image Like in the previous version The export node also got an improvement We now have a separate file name properties So you can have like a long directory here And it can be a bit annoying or difficult To change the file name in this small box So now we have new properties just to do with file name only And it will be replaced in this present end format We now also have the post-processing scale properties so that you can scale the image before exporting without having to use a separate scale node the random node also got a number of improvement you can now change the distribution function so by default it's gonna be uniform but there are also other random function that you can add as well including a custom one where you can define a distribution curve that you want then we have a shuffle mode now you will have more control over shuffling You can have it shuffle every frames, every end frame You can have it based on trigger or based on other properties There is now also a smoothing property that you can use To smooth out the randomization All this smoothing will rely on cache data So you might want to run the animation first Before it starts smoothing properly Because for stuff like convolution for example If you need to get the value of like the future frames right So you have to make sure that you run the animation first The blue node also got saturation control And blending control as well So you can apply blending to the bloom and you can also increase or decrease the saturation of the bloom before applying it to the original image the tunnels now got renamed from the tunnel in out renamed into a tunnel sender and tunnel receiver you can also open the tunnel panels directly from the inspector when you're inspecting the tunnel object in this panel you will now have an option to create a new receiver you will be able to go to that node and you can also delete the node and the receiver as well the Perlin noise and the cellular noise also got a new phase properties so this property will basically randomize the image in the way that it is loopable so if you set it from 0 to 360 and you can see here when you play the animation you're gonna see that it will loop back seamlessly and canvas node also got a lot of new improvement the fill tool now will be able to select the background so in the past the fill tool will ignore the background completely so the background property here but now there will be option to use background which is on by default it should include the background in the flood fill algorithm the isometric tools now have an outline which make it easier for you to see the shape that you are drawing especially when it's overlap with each other we now have the new gradient tools which allow you to create a gradient you can also apply some littering as well and we have pattern tools which allow you to apply a pre pattern directly on the canvas the resizer tools also got an improvement as well so first is that you can input the target dimension that you want directly in the text box up there you can also move the crop area and there's now two for you to align the crop area based on different position on your original canvas and next will be an improvement to the user interface so first with the hotkey menus 
So when you right click on some menu, there will be an option for you to edit the hotkey. Now you can also reset the hotkey as well if you already adjust the values. And on the topic of hotkeys, I also add the hotkey adjustment menu to the node 2 as well. You can right click and then edit the hotkey. And you can also right click on the action button down there in the toolbar as well to change the hotkey of those tools. When you're using a node 2, you can now also press A to reset to an empty hand. Now you can hold all key and they're gonna show the hotkey assigned to each of the tools. This is not a new feature, but you can now double press the all key and that label is gonna stay even when you release the all key. It will always stay on the screen. And now you can see which key are assigned to which tools and you can press double all again to remove the labels. For the graph editors, you can now hold control by dragging on a junction if you allow you to insert a junction at any point. So this is really useful with the dynamic input node. So for stuff like composite node where you can add any number of input, right? Here if you hold control, you can now insert the new input in any other position. And next you may notice that the dialog box now have some animation and the dialog box for export complete are now recolored to use the green colors instead of the default warning colors, which can be alarming to some user. Now it will just be a green tick mark. And as usual, we have a series of bug fixes I will be showing on screen right now. We have quite a number of them. Most of them are on the canvas node. In the next week or two, I'm gonna keep working on bug fix and some and small feature addition up until, I don't know, a week or two before I release 1.19 stable. The next video is probably gonna be 1.19 stable. I'm just gonna be a recap of all the features that I did throughout all the beta. And also because all the feature is kinda set in stone, I'll be able to go back and start working on documentation and tutorial for the next table as well. So the next two weeks gonna be uh, more light on the feature update, I hope. But yeah, that will be it for this release. This is probably gonna be the last beta release before the next table. So thank you everyone for watching and special thanks for our Patreon supporter. So Patreon supporter will be able to access the nightly build, which means that I'm gonna push in a new update almost every day. So if you are interested to see the development of the software, then you can become our Patreon members. So thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next one.